Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We could go home tonight already and say we have been in church, but the Lord gave me a message tonight. It's found in the book of Judges, chapter number one. Got your Bibles? Turn with me, Judges chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 17, 18, and 19. <coughs> well, let's read all the way through verse 21. 17 through 21. If you can, stand for the reading of God's Word. And Judah went with Simeon, his brother, and they slew the Canaanites that inhabited Zephath, and utterly destroyed it, and the name of the city was called Hormah. And Judah took Gaza with the coast thereof, and Eskinon with the coast thereof, and Ebron with the coast thereof. And the Lord was with Judah, and he drove, drove out the inhabitants of the mountains, but could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley, because they had chariots of iron. And they gave her born unto Caleb, as Moses said, and he expelled thence the three sons of Achan. And the children of Benjamin did not drive out the Jezreelites, the inhabitants of Jerusalem. But the Jebusites dwelled with the children of Benjamin in Jerusalem until this day. Heavenly Fathers, I come before you this night. I thank you already for what you've done in this service. Lord, I believe in the miracles that you've done. Lord, I believe healing here tonight. I believe salvation here tonight, Lord. Now, Lord, direct your servant in this word and let your children open up their hearts that they may receive what you have given here tonight. We ask it in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. I want to speak to us tonight on the subject, receiving the promise, but not possessing it. Receiving the promise, but not possessing it. I want you to notice that when the children sent the spies over to Canaan, God had promised to Israel, I'm going to give you this land which flowed with milk and honey. And he told them the borders thereof. And they began to go over and saw all the things that God had told them was there. But the ten spies deceived the hearts of Israel. And for 40 years they wandered in the wilderness. But at the end of the 40 years, the Bible said Joshua led them across Jordan. And they began to go in and began to conquer this land that God had given them. But in our reading here tonight, we find where the church is today. They had not gone and conquered everything. Now I believe the Lord said that we're to have life and have it more abundantly. I believe He said that we're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. I believe He said that we can do all things through the Lord Jesus which strengthens us. Yet, Sister Lord, we find ourselves beat down sometimes. We find ourselves crippled up sometimes by fear and doubt. We find ourselves in debate sometimes uh, in financial dilemmas and we just worry ourselves to death because we have not went out and possessed the promises of God. Now I want you to notice it said here that Judah had went in and drove out the inhabitants of the mountains there. But Brother Josh, the Bible said that they did not drive out the Canaanites in the valley because of one thing, Johnny. Said because they had chariots of iron. That lets me know, Sister Betty, they took their eyes off of God and began to get it on the problem the enemy had for them. Listen, the same God that gave them victory in the mountain is the same God that would have drove out the enemy in the valley, but they began to limit themselves by what they saw. 
Oh, Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. We have been blessed here lately. The Lord has been answering prayer after prayer. We've had people go to the hospital and God blessing them and bring them out with good reports and doctors often. And I want to tell you something. That's just the tip of what God would do if we start possessing what God told us we would have. Listen, this Bible is full of all the promises that you need, Brother Johnny. But you'll not have one of them until you possess it. You'll not have one of them until you possess it. Here they had the opportunity, Brother Lee. God done told them through Joshua where their borders were to be. That God done told them, I'm going to give you this land. God had parted the Jordan River. They walked on dry land. God brought down the wall of Jericho. But just like the church, they forgot what God had already done. Church, we are the same way. We're sitting here tonight and we are a people of miracles. We are a people that God has blessed miraculously. Every single one of you here tonight, God has done some kind of miracle in your life. But here tonight, some of you are facing pain and you're being defeated because you're not possessing the promise. You're allowing the enemy to bring up things in your eyes and you are bowing down, giving up, and you say, well, this is all I'm going to have in the Lord. Can I tell you, he said you have abundant life. Amen. God's people are living way below the standards, Sister Charlotte, of what they're supposed to have. We're supposed to be out doing the work of the Lord. We're supposed to be seeing the miracles. Jesus said the works I do shall ye do and greater. Amen. Where's the greater works at, Brother John? Or oh, where are even the works of the Lord? Amen. We are being pushed into a corner, Sister Betty, because we see the enemy. We hear the word cancer. Yes. We hear the word heart problems. We hear the words knee promises, Lord, and we back up away from what God has promised He would give us. Amen? Hallelujah. But it's time God's people start taking back what the Lord had promised. Amen? Hallelujah. Didn't I tell you tonight the word Judah means praise. Amen. Hallelujah. The tribe that should have been able to praise the Lord and have victory shut down before they got the job completed. Can I tell you tonight, that's what's wrong with most churches today. Their praise is gone. Well, they can praise the Lord on the mountaintops. But when they get down in the valley, amen, they begin to talk about how big the devil is. They begin to talk about how big their problem are. Come on, somebody. Help me preach it here tonight. Amen. He's the God of the valley too. Amen. My ass the valley son of the song. God on the mountain. Amen. And I'm a son of nobody. But he's God in the valley too. Amen. He'll be a God that will go with you through surgery, through cancer, through heart power. If you'll trust him. Amen. Hallelujah, but you've got to receive it here tonight. Amen. Possess it. Amen. Listen, this walk of faith. Stephen sung a song through the fire. He said he never promised victory without a battle. But Johnny, he promised you'd win the battle. What's wrong with us? We won't get up any and win the battle. How do I win the battle, Susan? I start proclaiming my healing. I start proclaiming my victory. I start proclaiming my blessing. Why? Because the Word said that I'm blessed. The Word said I'm healed. The Word said I'm delivered, Johnny. So I've got to take the battle to the devil and still let him bring it to me. Amen. Amen. Judah allowed the enemy to possess his valley. I ask you tonight, are you going to allow the enemy to possess your valleys? In the valley, David said, the Lord restores my soul. Oh, come on, somebody. <laughs> Woo! Brother Lee, I want to tell you tonight to testify God turning things around. Amen. He's working in the valley. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible said He restored our soul in the valley. David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow and death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Judah, the tribe of praise. The tribe in which our Lord would come from should have possessed everything God told them. But they were hemmed up 
by the enemy. And Johnny, what's so sad about it? The longer you let the devil stay in your valley, the longer you let the devil stay in your walk with God, he's going to pull you down. When you begin to read throughout Judges and throughout Samuel, it was the Canaanite that caused the problem. It was the Canaanite that caused him to serve false idols. Can I tell you here tonight, anything that's not of faith is sin. And the devil makes us sin when we begin to doubt what thus saith the Lord. When we begin to read or believe Johnny a report that the doctor gives us instead of what the Word says. Stephen, when we start believing a paycheck instead of what the Lord says. How many know God can stretch a paycheck? Amen. Hallelujah! He can meet a need. Amen, Brother Johnny? I know that He can. I've seen Him do it. Amen. Time after time after time. When I thought I didn't have a way out, He made a way where there seemed to be no way. Amen. But we have to possess the promises of God. You have to possess tonight that you are a champion. Amen. Come on, somebody. You are the victor, not the victim. When you get to realize who you are and you begin to realize what God has promised you and start taking back what God gave you and the devil has stole. Most of us, we don't even have our joy anymore. Amen. Amen. Hello? We need to walk in there as David did and take back. Amen. I read to you about the children of Benjamin. It said they drove everything out except the Jebusite. And the Jebusites kept a place which was called Jerusalem. It wasn't Jerusalem then. But can I tell you, Sister Betty, something happened. Amen. There came a man by the name of David that had an anointing upon him, Brother Johnny. God gave him an anointing. Something began to happen, Brother Lee. The Bible said that David, the first place he went was Jerusalem. The first place he went was the stronghold of the enemy. And he defeated them and made that his capital city. I'm here to tell you tonight, church, you need to drive the devil out. You need to get the strongholds out of your wall with God. Whether there's fear or doubt or whatever it is tonight, you need to get it out and begin to get to that anointing that destroys the yoke. Yes, amen. God don't want you yoked up, Stephen, with nothing but Him. When we begin to yoke up, baby, with the fears of this world, and the things that's going on, then strongholds begin to get Josh. Amen. Listen, sometimes we need to learn how to talk to ourselves. Amen. Amen. Come on. Yes. Come on, somebody. We let the devil talk to us, but we need to talk to ourselves and say, I am blessed. Amen. Amen. I am the head and not the tail. Come on, somebody. I'm a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You need to tell the devil, the devil, you got to leave in the name of Jesus. Amen. When you begin to speak those words according to the authority, God's given you authority. Amen. Hello, somebody here tonight. Help me preach it, Brother Johnny. Listen, you ain't got to let them devils run over you. The same God, Johnny Lowry that shut to the mouth of the lion for Daniel will shut to the mouth of those around you if you'll just trust him. <coughs> Daniel never kicked and screamed at all. Man, when they took him to the lion's den, he just went on. Why? Because he knew God that he served. He'd been praying three times a day already to God. And he knew that God wasn't going to let him down. He knew that God would move. And the Bible said when the king came early in the morning and began to cry out long before he got down to the mouth of that den of lions, he said, Oh, Daniel, has the God whom thou serve day and night delivered thee? All of a sudden he heard a familiar voice. Ringing up from the bottom of that pit of those den of hungry lions. He said, Oh, King, live on forever. My God has sent his angel to shut to the mouth of the lions. Johnny, they just made a pillow for old Daniel. They couldn't even lick him. All they could do is sniff him. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to tell you tonight, God can shut to the mouth of the devil if you'll just trust him. Amen. If you'll possess the promises of God. Don't let the devil rob you. Amen. Don't let the devil steal your faith. God has a work for you to do, but you can't do it in doubt. Amen. Young people hear me tonight. 
God's wanting to move in y'all's life. God wanting to make giant killers out of you. God wanting to make those that will be willing to go through the fire. Amen. Knowing that Jesus is there, Sister Lord. I want to tell you something. I thought about it. Me and Johnny was talking about this preacher and his wife and what they're going through. That song in the fire. Amen. Through the fire. Amen. My weakness is made strong. Hallelujah. When you possess the promise. Amen. It's one thing to hear about it. But it's another thing to possess it. Yes. There's a different walk that you have, Heather, when you possess something. It's called in today's language swagger. A little swagger about you. Why? Because you know you're the victor. Amen. You got a little pep in your step, Susan. Amen. And then people begin to look at you, Brother Lee, and they say, well, why are you so happy? <laughs> why? Why you got so much joy with all what's going on around you? You need to tell them, hey, but you don't know who's with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. You don't know who's preparing a way for me. Just hold on. Amen. I may be down by now, but God's going to raise me up. The Bible said when the enemy comes like a flood, says to Betty, God will raise up a standard. Johnny, God will raise up a standard. But the children of Israel here, Judah and Benjamin, allowed the enemy to stay in their walk with God. They could not completely let down the guard. They could not completely let their children run free like they needed to. Some of you here tonight, there's things going on in your lives that you need God to get the stronghold out. God's already promised He would. God's already told you. He doesn't gave you victory. Amen. But it's you that's got to possess what God said. Now you're going to have a battle you're going to have a battle. But man, you got to stand up. There has never been a battle once, Stephen, that somebody didn't fight. you got to fight to win. you got to fight to win. Johnny, the devil likes to keep us on the sideline. Waiting. When the commandments are already been given, go out and possess. Some of you sitting back and say, well, I'm just waiting for the Lord. The Lord's done it. He wrote it right here. It's in black and white. And in red. He done gave you. He told you to ask. And you receive. He told you to knock. It'd be open. He told you to seek and you'd find. But children, listen. you got to get up to do these things. Amen? you got to get up to knock on that door, Johnny. Hallelujah. you got to get up to ask the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We've got two men that are sent back. What's the devil come to do? Steal, kill, and destroy. Now I'm not talking about to people that haven't seen God move. Every one of you here on the sound of my voice, you're either a miracle that God's done brought you through something, or you've seen miracles in your life. So it's not like I'm not preaching something you don't know about. But I am preaching something that you haven't retained lately. I am preaching to you that you have allowed the devil to come into your walk and steal your joy. Steal your victory. Steal your ministry from God. Amen. And you allow him to do it when you need to say, step back, devil. I belong to the Lord and I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. There's some of you came in tonight under the sound of my voice. You need an old-fashioned Holy Ghost blessing tonight. And you allow the devil to steal it because you sit back and you think you're unworthy. Amen. Can I tell you tonight? He said, whosoever will. Yes. That means me and you. But here, when Joshua died, there were 12 tribes, Stephen, of Israel. Two and a half tribes, Johnny, stopped on the, this side of Jordan. This is where they got their land. When Joshua died, there was only three tribes that had possessed what God told them to have. Only three tribes. Johnny, that's, that's awful, isn't it? Might as well say three out of ten. That's 70% that had not got the potential of what God wanted them to have. Can I tell you this the same way in the church? 
when we should be shouting and praise the Lord from the front row all the way to the back, there's two or three, Johnny, that will praise the Lord. There's two or three that will have victory. There's two or three that will shout and let God move in their life. And the shame part is, God wants to bless every one of us. Every one of us. But we sit back and we let the devil steal our blessings. It's time that the church begin to drive out the enemy. It's time that you get the devil off your walk of faith. Yes. It's time you get the devil out of your house. It's time you get the devil out of your finances. It's time you get the devil out of your body. Amen. It's time to get the devil out of your children, your wife, and your husband. Amen. It's time that you start claiming victory in the name of the Lord. Why, Brother Dale? Because the Word says so. Amen. I'm not preaching something that you don't know. The Word says it. Amen. Amen. The Word says it. Jesus said unto him, everyone, he said, everyone that prays, God answers him. John, everyone that seeketh find him. Everyone that knocketh is open. Come on. Everyone asks for seek. You ain't got to have no special talent. You ain't got to be no preacher, Johnny. Come on, somebody. I'm going to tell you right now, you can have victory right in your home. You ain't got to be no great singer. You can just sing a song unto the Lord. Amen. Begin to sing that new song of victory. Begin to sing that song. Amen. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Victory, oh victory, shall be mine. If I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battle. Amen. Victory, oh victory, shall be mine. Listen, it's time that the church begin to get back and shout. Amen. It's time the church begin to get back the glory of the Lord. It's time, Sister Betty, that the anointing sweep over this place like a rushing mighty wind. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I remember when I came to church, Brother Josh is young. And <laughs> it wasn't none of this stuff playing on phones. It wasn't none of this stuff really talking here and yonder. You know why? We knew the Holy Ghost was going to move. Amen. Johnny, we knew we better, if we were small enough, we better get on the bench. Because the Holy Ghost going to get a hold of them and they're going to begin to run. Amen? Hallelujah. And if we were big enough, we wanted to see what God was going to do. Amen? Our curiosity was there. And God moved upon them old saints of God. They didn't have education. Amen? As far as this world is concerned. But one thing they knew, they knew God. Amen? Hallelujah. They knew how to praise Him. They knew how to thank Him. Amen? Hallelujah. Because they thanked Him in the morning. They thanked Him in noontime. And they thanked Him at night. Hallelujah. They had a relationship with yes, God. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something to Betty. Woo! Boy, if you've been a choir leader out there in Port Switch, Alabama, <laughs> you better get ready. Because, honey, when they begin to, begin to sing that song, I see it. The cloud, I hear a sound. It's going to rain. Holy Ghost is coming down, Johnny. They had a smaller platform. But the Holy Ghost get a hold and they start coming out. Shouting running the aisle, speaking in tongues. I want to tell you, they had church. Amen. And I ain't found nowhere in this Bible where it's changed, Johnny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The only thing that's changed is the Lord is us. Amen. They came in, they worked paperwork, both of them, Johnny, a farm. Amen. Yeah, we'll come in with so many little jobs we have, and we'll say, oh, how tired I am. Amen. Ain't none of you throwed five or six loads of paperwood or cut down that many didn't have them Loaders they got now, Johnny. They had to cut them with the chainsaws. And they'd load them trucks yet come church night. They were there. They piled behind that old mule all day long. But come church night, they were there. Them housewives, they did the gardening. They did the stuff around the house, Brother Johnny. But come church time, they were there. Amen. Like Sister Betty testifies a lot of times, Betty, they had a desire to be there. You know why? Because they were going to their doctor. They were going to their banker. Hallelujah. They were going to their lawyer. When they came to church, they knew whatever problem they had, Jesus was going to minister to it. Do you believe that tonight? Oh, hallelujah. Glory. I said, do you believe that tonight? That he's your healer. Amen. He's your doctor. Amen. He's your finance person. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And he's your family counselor. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody help me preach it tonight. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
and said they drove not out the children of the Canaanites because they had chariots of iron. Johnny, they forgot about the chariots of Egypt that God drowned in the Red Sea. Some of us here tonight, Sister Betty, have forgotten what God's done for us. I thought about it. Brother Johnny was giving the testimony to Sister Susan about your cancer. You know what the picture showed? And you know what God done? Amen. You know what God done? Hallelujah. I know what God did for me when I had to go to Pensacola to have a surgery. I know how he brought me out in one day when they said I'd be there three days. I know how he let me be back preaching after one week when they said it'd be eight weeks. I'm here to tell you tonight, I know what God can do. Amen. I've experienced his miracle work and power. Amen. I've seen him make ways for me and my wife that we had, didn't have no way to make it. But we never went without. Matter of fact, we were blessed more. Amen. And you think about your children. And some of us here tonight, we got grown children that are away from God. But I'm here to tell you tonight, you're looking at one right here, I used to be away from God. But I had a praying mama. I had a praying mama that would not let go Susan of her promise. She was going to possess it no matter what the devil did. She wasn't going to let go of her preacher. God done told her that's where I was going to be. And she held on to it. Even though I was out in the bar room and doing the things of the world, she kept praying. She kept believing. And I want to tell you something. The long arm of the Holy Ghost got a hold of me. Turn my life around, Betty. I want to tell you tonight. God will get a hold of y'all children, Johnny. No matter what they're in or where they're doing it, God can turn them around and bring them back in. But you have got to possess the problem. You have got to claim them. You have got to speak the things that were not, Johnny, as though they were. Amen. What are you saying, preacher? This mother grubbing, complaining, you'll never have victory like that. Amen. All you talk about is what you don't have. You'll never have victory like that. When you start speaking about the things that you do have, and start claiming the things that God that promised you were going to get. Amen. You go ahead and thank Him. Just like that song said, I want to thank you, Lord, for every time you've heard my prayer. I want to thank you, Lord, for every time you've been there. And every one of you here tonight, I know there's been times when you've been down and out. But then He showed up. <laughs> he showed up, Granny. Just like you showed up. That $24 may not sound like much to a lot of folks, but that $24 would like a lot, wouldn't it? But God showed up with it. Amen. He said, don't worry about it. Can I tell you that? Then? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I got to remind some of you here tonight what God's done for you. How He's blessed you. Amen. Amen. How He put food on your table. There's a song that said, didn't I wake you up in the morning? Didn't I clothe you? Did not put food on your table? Didn't you walk into your closet? Eat footstep in time, Brother Lee. Come on now, I'm going to tell you. You're riding a two-car. Amen. But in the last part of last year, you didn't have nothing, Harley. Hallelujah. But can I tell you, God blessed you with two of them. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Yes. God's turning it around, Stephen. God's turning it around. I thought about my son back here. He waited a long time. To get him a truck, Johnny. Praying, seeking, trying to get it. Go look at one, they'd be sold it. Uh, go look at one, it wouldn't work out. Uh, but God had the right one. Amen. God had the right one waiting on him. Amen. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you something. God's got your blessing waiting on you tonight. God's got just what you have need of tonight. Man, if you'll trust God, He's got the right job for you that will provide for your family, son. But you've got to trust Him. You've got to take that walk of faith. And you've got to wake up in the morning. Thank God for what you got. Thank God for the automobiles that you're riding in. Say, God, you gave them to me. And you're going to help me keep them. I got a truck out there that's paid for. When I bought it, Betty, I had to borrow money from my sister to make the down payment. Yeah. But I prayed and I said, God, if this thing's going to cause me a problem, 
If it's going to cause problems in my family, if it's going to cause me a financial problem, don't let me get it. Shut up the doors. Can I tell you, my sister had the money given to me. Got the automobile. Six months later, Johnny, I'm out of a job, disabled. <laughs> you think the devil didn't want to try to jump on me, Sister Lord? Amen. What you going to do now? What you going to do now? I think it was $344 payment on that thing. What you going to do now? You ain't got no money coming in. What you going to do now? Amen. You know what I did? I trusted in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. He helped me pay back my sister. Amen. I knew he'd help me pay the rest of it. Can I tell you, not one payment was missed on that truck. Not one, John. And before, I paid it off a year and a half early because God blessed me. Amen. Johnny, I'm not bragging on me. I'm bragging on Jesus. I'm here to tell you when I started possessing. Don't think the devil ain't going to throw something in front of you, Stephen. Don't think he ain't going to make it seem like granny. You can't make it through. But just remind yourself where God's already brought you. Just remind yourself what God's already done. I like what Johnny said right If you did it one time, he'll do it again. He'll do it again. But see, if the devil can get you in the doubt, if the devil can get you looking at the iron chariot, if the devil can get you looking at how bad things look around you and begin to talk about, oh, how bad it is, he'll steal everything you got. Yes, but I tell him right now, he's lost the battle with me. How about y'all, church? Yeah. Has he lost the battle with you? Yeah. He had me tell the devil he's lost. Hey, amen. Devil, you're defeated in my life. Hey, amen. You're defeated in my body. You're defeated in my finances. Hey, amen. You're defeated in my family and my church. Because I want to tell you right now, David, David, Sister Betty, when he got anointed him, when he stood up to be king, the first order of business, was go to stronghold with the devil had. And you know what he did, Johnny? He just didn't kick him out. He made that place his capital. Whatever the stronghold is tonight in your walk with God, that the devil's holding you back. Tonight, I want you to make it the stronghold for Jesus. I wanted to make you the capital city. You know what was in the capital city, Benny? The temple. The place of worship. Johnny, Whatever it is that the devil's torment you with, you give it to God and say, this is going to be the place I worship in. This is going to be the place I worship in. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you some of you tonight, you and your bodies and the devil's trying to torment you with it. Tonight, make that the place of worship. Make it the place where God is going to bless you at. Come on, somebody. If it's your finances, tell the devil that you had it long enough. It belongs to God now. And he's going to bless me in it because I'm here and I'm faithful to him. And if you're faithful, God will turn it around. Musicians, make your way on back up here. Everybody stand to your feet. God sent me here tonight to preach this message. There's many in the house that have received the promise, but they're not possessing it. How many tonight want to possess the promises of God? Amen. We're going to sing a little chorus. We sing a lot of times around here. Said so he'll turn it around. And if you believe tonight that God's going to turn around your situation, ask yourself, did God fail you? No. He ain't failed none of us. So if he's done it one time, how many believe he can do it again? Amen. So when we get to this course, we're going to say, Turn around, turn around. If you believe tonight God's going to turn your circumstances around, I want you just to turn around and tell God, say, God, you're going to turn around for me. God said, He will turn it around.
Lord told me to do. Sister Susan is facing cancer, and I believe God's healer. We've got to have faith tonight. If you're here tonight and God has healed you of cancer, I want you to go to her and I want you to tell her God turned it around for me. You that are here tonight, Matt needs a good job, needs the right job. If God's opened the door for you, I want you to go to him and I want you to tell him, God turned it around for me. If God lays it on your heart to go tell somebody what God's done for you, then that's what you do. Amen. The Bible said we're overcoming by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's worship the Lord. God said we sister too. It's her only son. Her only son. 
for y'all be in prayer. We'll be in prayer with the family headed down there tomorrow that God will give them a safe trip down there, a safe trip back. Amen. Amen. I'm looking to hear a great report. How about y'all? Amen. Let's all stand. Brother Lee, how about this, Mr. Sin? Pray. Yes, sir. Mr. Sin, the Father, the Lord, we thank you for this. Yes, Lord, thank you for your service tonight. Father, thank you for this service. Lord, just let it go. Father, I ask you to be with us tomorrow and see that you have served the Lord. Deliver those that are bound. Save those that are lost. Father, I ask you to pray for us in the holy time. According to your word. In Jesus' name. Love one another, children.